Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds, another in our series on winter birds of your area. Uh, uh, this is geared to uh, different parts of the country, and it's birds that you can look for or you, you typically see maybe in your at your backyard bird feeder setup or in your yards maybe in the winter months. Now, I am not covering in the, this series of videos all the common birds. So, you know, many species of birds that are widespread across the U.S., and I have done many videos on, on most of those or all of those species over the years. So things like uh, blue jays and downy woodpeckers and juncos and, uh, uh, you know, downy, and downy woodpeckers, red belly woodpeckers, a lot of the birds that are just really, really widespread, that's not what this video is about. This video is about birds and this particular episode is of the northwestern area of the United States. So, you know, up there in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and that part of the country. So I want to address kind of give you some information about those birds that you get to see that maybe a lot of us in the rest of the country don't get to see. So now I know this bird, the first bird I'm going to start with is the pine siskin. Yes, I do know pine siskins do invade, uh, depending upon the year, into the well into the lower 48s, uh, and in some years we don't have any, some years we have a lot. Well, you guys in the Pacific Northwest, you typically have a lot of pine siskins. They have a big, heavy breeding population up uh, in Alaska and northwestern Canada, and they move down uh, pretty much every year for you. So they'll be mixed in with, with you know, your goldfinches and things. Uh, but the, they do look like a, a, a goldfinch with stripes. That's how I describe them. The, the bill is the same. The shape is the same. Um, and they, they, look, they look dark because of the striping. But when they kind of fan their wings and their tail, you see that yellow in there. Um, and they're just a fun bird, and they you know they can be attracted to uh, Niger sunflower chips, a mixture of those, uh, and they're that what I find is a mixture of Niger and sunflower chips works the best for them. So uh, you guys get to see pine siskins much more regularly than a lot of us do, especially here in the Midwest. Now you know, the chickadee of interest up there is the beautiful chestnut back chickadee. We, we you, I'm, I'm sure you probably have black cap chickadees up, and if you live in the mountain areas up in your area, up in that part of the world, you probably may have mountain chickadees. But the the chestnut bat chickadee is a, kind of the unique bird of that western uh, coastal area, all up and down. A beautiful little chickadee, uh, but like all chickadees, they can be attracted to. Uh, peanuts, a uh, hull of sunflower seed, sunflower seed, suet. Um, they're, they're the boldest, bravest little birds in the world, I think, you know, a group of birds. They, they, I always used to say you put up a bird feeder for the first time, you can almost guarantee that the chickadee would be the first one to find it, unless you live in an urban area where the house sparrows are so common. But you know, chickadees are very smart, and they're, and other birds actually follow them around to find their seed. So you guys are lucky enough to have the chestnut back chickadee, which is absolutely beautiful up in that part of the world. And another tiny bird that, that we had, don't get to see at all out here are the little bush tits. And I mean tiny. I mean, these guys are little guys, and they uh, very active. And they're usually in little groups. You find them in little groups. And one of the cool things about them um, and, and I had forgotten this. I mean, I've seen them many times out in the West and the, and the Southwest uh, bird watching, but I forgot that the females have yellow ir irises and yellow eyes and the males have dark eyes. So you can tell the males from females that way, which is pretty cool. Um, and they, you know, they're very opportunistic feeders. So um, you, you, you can have them very active in your backyard, especially when the, they're, they're gathering insects, if that's available, but in the cold months, they can be attracted to bird feeder stations too. So the beautiful little bush tit and, and, uh, is a unique bird for you guys. And if you know me, watch me, and you can see behind me the Winter Sparrows article I wrote years ago. Uh, one a, a sparrow that I'm really jealous of you guys out there that we don't get here in the Midwest is the the Golden Crown Sparrow. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, it's related to the White Crown Sparrows and the White Throated Sparrows and Harris's Sparrows, which we have here in the Midwest in the winter. But the Golden Crown Sparrow is 
extremely rare, rare out here in this part of the world. So you get to enjoy those scratching around under your feeders, around the edges of the, the woods and, and uh, gathering millet and, and what seeds are dropped to the ground. But to, they're a large sparrow, very impressive birds. I, I, love, I love getting to see them. Every time I bet birded out in the, the western part of the U.S., I always look forward to seeing them. And the other thing about the sparrows of the West. Now, we, you know, fox sparrows, like this guy here, fox sparrows are very widespread across the, um, the U.S. and the southern U.S. in the winter months. But the thing about northwestern birds as a whole is they tend to be darker. Um, uh, this is a, a sooty uh, version that, that you guys get up in the Pacific Northwest, where is the fox sparrows that we get here in the Midwest, especially to the east and south, tend to be more reddish and gray in the face, red, red and gray, whereas your sooty fox sparrow is uh, much more chocolatey and, 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 and overall just a darker bird. So that's really cool uh, uh, race of uh, fox sparrows that you guys get up there that we don't get to see here. And another bird that's, uh, I guess, pretty prevalent and, and it, it, up in your area in the winter at feeders is the spotted towhee. Uh, we have the eastern towhee in our part of the world, and occasionally we get spotted towhees uh, that move down out of the Rocky Mountains into our area. But you guys up there, uh, spotted towhees are a mainstay. And, you know, I so say they, they scratch like a chicken, you know, kind of like the fox sparrows do that too, scratching with two feet, um, kicking around leaves and, and, and getting two seeds and insects that are under the leaf litter. So the spotted towhee, a beautiful bird. And it's definitely one that you guys get to see up there. Now, I said I, that, that I typically don't in these programs, I'm not covering juncos, but when you guys have a junco that's unique compared to slate colored juncos, are the most widespread, most common uh, race of, of juncos, and that's the eastern two-thirds of the country. But up in your neck of the woods, up in the northwest, you mainly have Oregon juncos. And there are a couple of different races of Oregon juncos. There's pink-sided ones and uh, more the traditional. But they have the black hood, brown back, and the white underbelly, uh, whereas like the ones we get state colored are all that dark hood color all the way back to the tail. So the Oregon juncos are, are, are what you guys uh, primarily have up there. And I understand they're pretty darn common at, at bird feeder stations in the Northwest. So, uh, and, but of course, another bird to me that absolutely – signifies the northwestern part of the United States, and that is the varied thrush. Uh, very much like a robin. Uh, they look like a robin, shaped like a robin. Um, I think their call sounds like a telephone ringing. And I think it's really cool. Um, we, they do turn up down here in, in the harsh winters. A few get driven down into the plains. We occasionally get to see them. But, man, that's, it's a rare bird. And I think they're just stunningly beautiful. Um, and uh, you guys are lucky that you get the varied thrush up there in your part of the world. Now, uh, we both have flickers. Uh, we are, the flickers are widespread. But our flickers here in the eastern part of the country are have yellow on the shafts underneath their wings. And you guys are lucky enough to have the red shafted version out there. And you can see the red in the wings and uh, from underneath and, and in the tail feathers where all that for our birds are yellow. The facial pattern is different. You, red shafted flickers actually have a red mustache, the males do. And yellow shaft is a black mustache um, uh, instead of a red mustache. So a couple of differences, but you guys out there, the, uh, you know, the red shafted flicker, uh, big impressive bird and always fun to see at your bird feeders. And then, of course, one thing that you guys get that we definitely don't get in winter, <laughs> and that's a hummingbird. So the Anna's hummingbirds um, will can withstand colder temperatures, and they do really well. Uh, and they'll a lot of the populations, some will move south in the winter months, and, and I'm sure they move down from, from north of you. But really, in the northern northwest United States in the winter months, according to the Project Feeder Watch data, you know, you record uh, Anna's hummingbirds regularly in the winter months. So if you if you haven't put out hummingbird feeders or maintained them through the winter months, you might get entertained by uh, an Anna's at your feeders because they they are they are up there. And this is, of course, an adult bird on the left and a juvenile bird on the right, just getting some of that red in the gorget there. So uh, lucky to have uh, hummingbirds there for you sticking around all winter. So uh, they're that part of the country, you know, like I said, that people, somebody just asked me recently about uh, birds being different 
the I, you know when I talked about the southeast and, and we always talk about the Midwest because that's where I'm from and located. But yes, the dividing line for really different birds are the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains, the desert southwest, the Great Plains, those were always physical barriers that bird that separated bird populations from east to west. So that's why field guides, a western field guide, is from the Rocky Mountains to the west coast and east to the east coast to Atlantic Ocean are eastern birds considered. So northwest, definitely uh, western birds. So there's several different ones in there. If you're watching this from the east, you're going, wow, I wish I had those. So uh, we love it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I know so, uh, like I said, the people have been watching these going, oh, when's my section next? When, when, when are you going to do it by me? Well, I think next week, next time I'm going to, and it should be maybe next Monday sometime, uh, I'm going to post uh, Birds of the Southwest. And the plan after that is to do the Rocky Mountain region. So uh, if, you, if you're trying to plan out and want to know what we're going to be doing, that's the plan. So hope everybody has a great day. Thank you for watching. Keep sending those ideas for programs in because they do mean a lot. So thanks so much. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. And until next time, let's talk birds.